How to fix a leaking frost proof. Now this is something that every homeowner should know how to do. If you've never been here before, do me a favor, subscribe and ring the bell. That way, every time we put out a new video, you'll find something of value. Now, any homeowner should know how to do this. Why? Because plumbers normally come out and wanna change it. And there's a good reason, but if you've just got a drip, this is something as a homeowner, you may be able to do yourself. So I wanna teach you today how to fix a leaking frost proof. And if you'll hang around, I'll even show you how to fix a leaking hose bib if that's what you have. One of the old style that stick up out of the ground. Anyway, let's get started on this. So the first things you need to know are the different parts. So I'm just gonna pick one up here. And what I wanna tell you is you need to know where the leak is coming from. Where's the leak, ma'am? If the leak is coming from up here, say around the handle, whenever you turn it on and you have a hose hooked up, if it's leaking up here around the handle, that is really an easy fix. And that's one that it's funny because home inspectors tag these a lot on inspection report. If you've ever sold a house and a home inspector came look and said, look, you have leaks on your frost proof. You need to get a plumber to look at this. Chances are you might just be able to put an adjustable wrench on it and tighten it up. And I've done that many times, followed home inspectors. I've even called them. I said, hey, it was just the handle leaking. Why didn't you tighten it up? They said, well, if we try to tighten it up and it makes it worse, they're gonna have to call a plumber. Well, your report made them call a plumber anyway. Why not at least try to help them out? I don't know, it is what it is. Anyway, normally I show up, tighten it up, it doesn't leak. I'm like, hey, you're good, I'm out of here. Anyway, know where the leak is from. If it's right around this nut, right around this packing, you can probably tighten that up yourself. Now you may not realize it because if you've got a hose here and you see it dripping, it's gonna drip right down here on the vacuum breaker. Now, if it's leaking around the vacuum breaker, these, you really, you just wanna change it out. Change out the entire frost proof. Now, you might be able to fight this and get the vacuum breaker off, but they normally lock these on so you can't. Here's what I tell you. If it's not leaking from the handle, you probably wanna go ahead and try the next step. The next step being, I'm gonna teach you how to take it apart and change the washer on the inside. But first, let's look at a different style. Now, the other one had the vacuum breaker down here. This has actually got it on top. So if you've got a leak up here at the vacuum breaker, you can actually order a vacuum breaker repair kit. You need to see what brand frost proof you have and get online, order the vacuum breaker repair kit. It changes out really easy. You literally undo the nut on the top then get a pair of needle nose pliers. See how this is designed like this? Stick your needle nose pliers in there and twist it. Just like anything else, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Undo it, and then you've got a repair kit. Now you see there's two pieces to it. You've got the float on the inside that will come up and push and seal off. But anyway, the repair kits for these are very inexpensive. And if it's just leaking up at the top, it's something that you can change as a homeowner very easily. The neat thing about it is on a frost proof, the water shuts off way back here. We're gonna to get to the washer in a minute. Since the frost proof is designed like it is and the water shuts off way back here, you don't even have to turn off the water to change the vacuum breaker. Put it together after you change it out, put the cap back on, and if the leak was up here, you've got it fixed if you put a vacuum breaker repair kit on it that was designed for yours. But like I said, figure out what brand it is, order a repair kit and change it yourself. Now, one thing that I wanna show you on the cap, it says remove hose or faucet may freeze. Now, why is that important? Well, because in the winter time, if these things are not installed properly, say they're installed with backfall or they're installed flat, maybe even downwards like they should be, but somebody left a hose hooked up. Some of these, as you see, this is wider at the top, narrow at the bottom. And when you look, when it's level, it's designed to have fall to it. This is a great design. But even if you leave a hose hooked up, it may hold water in here and you'll get a freeze break. Here's the problem with that. If this freezes in the middle of winter, busts right here and opens up, once everything thaws, that little bit of water is gonna melt out. But most people aren't gonna realize this till summertime, whenever they turn on their hose to wash their car or something. So when they put the hose on, turn this on, or when the hose is already connected and they just come out and turn it on, if you've got a sprayer on the other end, once you let go of it and stop that water, this is gonna spray out of here like crazy. So once we remove the stem to replace the washer, I'm gonna show you where to look and how to look to see if possibly yours has a freeze break on it. Now, another thing too, maybe it's just leaking right here. Maybe you just need to replace 
the washer in the end of your garden hose. Sometimes that's all that leaks, but people still call us and ask us to come out. Their frost proof is leaking, their hose bib is leaking, and really, it's just a washer on the water hose. Now, one thing I wanna show you real quick is sizes. Now, these are 10 inch frost proofs, and as you can see, they're different, okay? I've got about a half inch difference there. So one thing you may wanna pick up if you decide to change this out yourself is an extension. It's half inch female by half inch male. So if you came and took this one, the longer one out, you may need an extension to put on here to make it just as long. Now, you wanna make sure that you're using a good PTFE Teflon tape or a good pipe thread sealant. Now, both these are what we use. That's why I wanted to show them to you. You wanna make sure anytime you're making a threaded connection, especially in the wall, you have some kind of pipe thread sealant on there. That way you don't put this together and have a leak continuously in the wall. That's gonna to lead to bigger problems. All right, so let's look at one of these to go ahead and change the washer. So say you've got the water off, you've got the hose disconnected, but it's dripping right out of here where the hose connects. What do you do? Well, most plumbers would come out and tell you, we wanna change these out. Now there's a good reason for that. The seat in here is designed where it's not replaceable, meaning a lot of times there's a nick in the brass back there and we can't fix that. So what we wanna do is we wanna take it out. But here's a problem. The way these are designed, they can either be threaded in or they can be soldered in. And we're not gonna know until we get out there and chip out enough mortar to look in the wall and see if we can tell. If we can see a drop eared L or female adapter where this is threaded to, then we know we may be able to just unthread it and change it out. But as a homeowner, one thing you may try first is to change the washer. So what I recommend is going out to your valve box or your meter, if your city allows you to, and turn the water off. Then open it. You wanna let this drain. You want all the water to drain out of it that you can. If you have anything in the house or maybe the faucet in the backyard is lower, you can open it to drain the water lower. That way, if you do end up unscrewing this, you don't leak in the wall. So once we have the water off, we have the water drained down, we're gonna take an adjustable wrench. Then what we're gonna do, literally right here on this hex nut, we're gonna get on it, and I've already loosened this up a little bit, but we're gonna turn it so we can loosen it. That way we can unthread it and take the stem out. What we do is pull the entire stem out. Now, what I would tell you to do is look at the washer. What does it look like? If you can look at that washer and see that it's boogered up, the next thing that I'm gonna tell you is really important. You wanna take a light and shine down in here because you wanna look and see that seat that I talked about a while ago is actually all the way back here at the very back. And if it's got a nick in it, what you're trying to do, the reason you're looking in there, you wanna see, does it look round? Does it look smooth? Or does it look like it's cracked, broken, got a nick in it, anything at all like that? Because if so, changing the washer out probably isn't gonna help. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. But let's say everything in there looks good. Now, if you hadn't seen it yet, I've got another video where I show you how to change out a frost proof, literally, it doesn't take much now that you've already got the water off to do it. I would recommend watching that video, taking the frost proof out, carrying it with you to the hardware store or getting online and ordering one. That way you can have one there. If you know how long it is, you can stop right now, order one, have it there. That way next time you shut the water off, you've got all the pieces with you. But let's say everything is good there. So what do you wanna do now? You wanna take the screwdriver and watch this. Notice the end of it's moving. Some of these are designed where this piece on the end turns. So again, go back to your adjustable wrench, put it on there, and then loosen up the screw. Now be very careful that you don't drop this screw because if you weren't planning on changing the faucet, you're gonna need it. Now, remember I told you, this is the washer. This is what you're trying to change out. So I'm gonna lay the washer and the screw here I'm gonna set these over out of the way. And I'm gonna open up my kit and I know that that is a double lot washer and I can squeeze it until it's kind of soft. So I wanna make sure that I go in with the exact same size washer. Now, a little trick here. If you look on the back of the washer, it normally gives you the size. Now this one says zero, zero, just like I said. So I had my size right. What I wanna do is I wanna push it down in there and make sure everything seats like it's supposed to. 
So as you can see, it went down in there very well. I'll pull it back out just to show you how thick it is. And you have a recess there that it actually sets in. So I wanna push it down in there real well. Now remember, the zero, zero, I turned towards the handle. The reason being, I want a smooth surface here to go up against that seat. I don't wanna give it any reasons to possibly leak. If you've ever done one of these before and you're a homeowner, not a plumber, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know what was the biggest problem that you had. And I'm just curious because as plumbers, we deal with these all the time. So normally we get down where these come in and out pretty quick. So once you get everything done, you tighten it up, take a good look at it, make sure your washer looks level all the way across. That way nothing pushed up, jammed out or anything like that. Now, literally one thing that I like to do, I like to take a little bit of heat proof grease and put on the washer. That just gives it a nice smooth, moist surface to go up against that seat. That way you don't have any friction problems. Then go back to your opening. Now, one thing I want you to remember, this is all on the wall. So chances are you can't see it, but you've looked down in here. Remember I told you about the freeze? While this is open, whenever you look in there to check that seat, you also wanna look at the outside of it. You wanna look and see if there are any splits in that wall. If it froze, it's gonna have a rupture and you'll be able to see it, or hopefully you can see it from the inside. So while you've got this, while you're looking through it, shine a light down in there, see if you see any breaks, any ruptures, any cracks, anything at all that could cause a leak in your wall. Because if it does, it's gonna mess up sheetrock, studs, anything on the inside. Now you're ready to put it back together. Slide it back in really smoothly. Always check your washer. Now this has a neoprene washer on it here. Always check your washer, make sure it's nice and neat and straight. Start your threads. One thing you wanna do is take a pair of adjustable pliers, hold back up on it. That way, when you're tightening this up, if it is threaded inside the wall, you're not loosening these threads and maybe breaking the seal. Now remember that too, when you go to loosen that in the beginning, you may wanna put an adjustable pair of pliers on it so that when you do, Turn that nut, this doesn't move. If you loosen these threads up here and cause a leak, you're gonna regret it later. So that was really pretty easy to do. Now, remember, if you do have to change it, the one you took out, remember, put thread sealant on the spacer if you did it. If not, right here is where we put our Teflon tape on and get it ready to screw back in. Now, hopefully you didn't have to take it apart. Hopefully you were just able to change the washer and that fixed it. Now, one thing that I'll tell you, make sure you tighten your packing nut, snug everything down, go slowly turn the water back on, just crack the valve, let it slowly fill. If you want to, you can open this, crack the water on, come back to this till water starts coming out. That way you know that line has bled all the air out, it's got water in it, and snug it up. Now, if there's no mortar around here and you can peek inside there, peek inside just to make sure you didn't loosen any threads and that will help you out. Once you know it's not leaking, turn the valve off, go back to the valve that you shut the water off, either at your main supply or at the meter, and turn it back on. Now, say you've got just a regular hose bib sticking up out of the ground. These are actually even easier. Again, you're probably gonna want to hold back up. So if it's got a nut or anything like that on it, get you a pair of pliers or another adjustable wrench so you can hold on to it. Then you're gonna loosen not the stem packing nut, but actually the bonnet on top, you're gonna to loosen that up and loosen everything up. Now, do just like we did on the frost proof. Turn the water off, open this up, crack it, bleed it out. That way you don't have water just spraying out of here because it's still under pressure. And just like on the end of the stem, you've got another washer here. What you do is hold on to the handle, loosen your screw, and again, we've got another double lot washer. Again, I love the double lot soft to replace these with. I think you get a lot of good use out of them and they'll do the job. Once you get it all put back together, again, the heat proof grease. You don't put any Teflon or anything like that on these threads. They've got packing nuts. There's another packing nut in the handle. See the washer right there? That's gonna tighten down there to make sure that nothing up here leaks on top. Put it back together, tighten your nuts up, and you're good to go. The tools you may need, you may need a pair of needle nose pliers, a four-way screwdriver, an adjustable 
wrench, a pair of adjustable pliers, Teflon tape, or pop dope, whichever way you wanna go. Me, believe it or not, I put on Teflon tape first and then pop dope, and I love it because I normally don't have leaks. Guys, this is something that literally most homeowners should be able to do themselves. I hope you understood that there's really not a lot to this. And if it is just a washer, that is a simple, very inexpensive repair that you can do yourself. Why do plumbers charge so much for this? Because if this is screwed in and we don't know, we don't want to spend a lot of time changing out a washer and realize the seat is cracked or nicked. So normally plumbers go ahead and say, look, our suggestion is to replace it. And that's normally the right thing to do. But if you're a homeowner, a DIYer, and you love doing things yourself, changing a washer out is something that is relatively easy to do. If you found anything useful here today that you think helped you, do me a favor, leave a comment down below. If this is something you've done or you tried to change the washer and you ended up having to change out the frost proof, do me a favor again, leave me a comment down below and let me know how it turned out for you. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.